This work of art that I am discussing is known as a chass. It was created in the 13th century, or more specifically between 1225 and 1250 in Limoges, France. It was a gift of S. Livingston Mather, Constance Mather Bishop, Philip R. Mather, Catherine Hoyt Cross, and Catherine Mather McLean, in accordance with the wishes of Samuel Mather. This piece was created in a Moji's workshop and more likely than not created to be placed and used in a church. This chass now lives in the Cleveland Museum of Art for viewers to admire. It more likely than not no longer contains any relics. A chass is a container with a pyramid-shaped roof that could have possibly been used for the safekeeping of sacred relics. To the viewer's eye, possibly churchgoers or other faithful, a chass could look somewhat like a house, but the original intention of these were to create the imagery of a church or tomb. Depending on the size of the chass, saints' remains, clothes, and other items were placed in them, and even sometimes entire bodies. Later on, during the medieval period, a chass like this one was probably placed in a church on an altar during a feast day, or saints' or other church holidays. The faithful would bring sacred items with them, and they would be honored within the chass. This chass in particular is 9 and 11 16 inches tall and 9 and 1 half inches wide. This is relatively small, meaning that it could have originally held a much smaller relic, such as hair or an article of clothing of a particular saint. A typical chass was made out of enamel. There were many enamel workshops found throughout Limoges because of this. A commonly used method for applying enamel was known as champlevé. This is an enameling technique in the decorative arts in which troughs or cells are carved, etched, die struck, or cast into the surface of a metal object, and then filled with enamel powder. The piece will then be fired, allowing for the enamel to properly set, and once it cools, it was then polished. This technique was seen as less messy and much more refined because of the troughs that were placed between the enamel colors, meaning that they would not run into each other. The actual metal used in this chass was copper, and the enamel background used was a dark blue in color. The use of copper was actually quite strange, because yes, it is a significant part of enameling, but it cannot be found anywhere in Limoges, and the question of where the copper came from still remains unanswered. This Champlevé technique was often compared to another enameling technique that was used at this time, cloisonné. This technique is very similar, but instead of the carved troughs, Metal strips were placed between the colors of enamel. This created a less distinguished look because there was a possibility of the enamel colors running into each other. Both of these enameling techniques were used throughout this time period, but in Limoges, France, Chapleuve was much preferred. Each figure shown in this chass are separated by a median band of turquoise enamel and strewn with rosettes, which are literally small designs and decorations. On the top of the chass, there is an engraved crest that has three superimposed crystal knobs that are decorating the posts at the center and ends. There are twelve keyhole arches, and evenly spread between them are four crystal cabochons, which are polished gems, that are all mounted in lozenge, which is a rhombus or diamond-shaped flat setting. There was also a common formula of imagery used for chasses made at this time. The imagery typically used was Christ's crucifixion at the center of the bottom of the front of the chass, Christ in majesty at the center of the top of it, and other images of people close to Christ surrounding the central figures of him, which are all shown in the engravings of this chass. The standard iconography of the crucifixion is with Mary and St. John on either side of Jesus, which is specifically shown here. Also, above Mary and St. John, there seems to be two personified figures of the sun and the moon, possibly allowing for the viewer to connect the earthliness and heavenliness of Jesus. The image of Jesus directly above, known as Christ in Majesty, shows him emerging from the clouds, holding a codex, which is a manuscript or a scroll, and blessing the viewer with his other outstretched hand. Directly above Jesus' hands are the Alpha and Omega symbols, which are described in the Apocalypse, chapter 22, verse 13, where it says that Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end.
thus symbolizing Christ, was always there for us and always will be, and he is in all things created and will be everlasting. Surrounding Jesus are circles engraved with figures symbolizing images of the four evangelists, the writers of the Gospels. On the right and left of Christ are two standing figures who could possibly represent deacons or saintly figures that hold some sort of religious rank. On the back of this chest, there are two different panels that each have identical images of three angels on them. The angels' wings extend out of their decorative circles, possibly portraying their heavenliness or greatness. The beautiful blue enamels used on the back could also be another portrayal of heaven, or possibly showing the angels up in the sky. Only one of the lateral sides of this chass is in its original state. It is the side with the other angel on it. The angel is beautifully done with precise lines cut into the copper. The angel may also be seen as emerging from the clouds and blessing the viewer with his left hand and holding some type of manuscript in the other. The other side of this chass is not original, and it seems to be some sort of demonic being on a door-like opening allowing for someone to place items within. There were many works of art, in particular chasses, created between the 12th and 13th centuries that were made with enamel. A good comparison to the first chass shown is a plaque from a chass for the relics of St. Thomas Becket. This piece can also be found in the Cleveland Museum of Art, and this chass was also French and made in Limoges in around 1220 to 1225. It follows that basic structure of engraved and gilded copper with Champlevet enamel. This chass would be considered a sister to the first one because of the similarities of the te techniques used, especially the enameling technique. St. Thomas Becket was brutally murdered on December 29, 1170 in Canterbury Cathedral. Becket was the archbishop at the time and many of his followers were quite upset by this. This caused an outbreak of chasses to be made throughout the 12th and 13th centuries to house the relics of Thomas Becket. These chasses were produced in Limoges workshops just as the previous chass, but this one was actually traced back to a specific shop, the workshop of Master G. Alpeus. He was a well-known enamel maker in France who produced many different chasses at this time. Specifically in this chass, Alpeus created a relationship between the murder of Archbishop Thomas Becket and the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. This shows another comparison to the first chass, the imagery of Christ's crucifixion. Overall, chasses and enameling were very popular at this time in Limoges, France. Many were created for the keeping of saints' relics. Now you can find items such as these in churches, or even museums such as the Cleveland Museum of Art, for our own enjoyment.